Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on this week's video podcast. I can't even decide what to call this, video cast, video podcast, anyway, we'll get to that later. Uh, and joining me today to talk about this week's topic is, um, you know, as we head into Labor Day weekend and some deals that have come out, not necessarily for travel on Labor Day, but uh, out through the fall as well as all the way into uh, the holiday season is our editor from the site at Bear Compare, Ann McDermott. Hey, Ann. I know what we can call this. We can call this show and tell because I am busy <laughs> practicing packing for a trip and I have discovered the most wonderful thing. It's called a zip, zip bag and you can use it for a million things. I, I am busily filling them now. <laughs> is, is that the one where you actually hook the vacuum cleaner to it and suck out the air? <laughs> No, that's a level of sophistication that is beyond me, Rick. This is just I, sticking things in a bag. Somebody, yeah, somebody sent me this thing where you actually put all your clothes in a plastic bag, you suck the air out of it, and it ends up looking like a pancake that you can put in your carry. -on. Yeah, I hear about that for storage, but I keep thinking, um, yes, but when you come back, you have no magic thingy to stick in to suck all the air out. So you've got what? You've got to buy another suitcase. <laughs> I have this fear of opening one of those and being trapped in my room as it expands the entire size of the room. Um, anyway, so talking about uh, these these deals that have been coming out, you know, I've I've gotten several questions lately about, you know, are prices getting higher or lower? What do they look like compared to last year? And um, you know, really, honestly, as tracking fares goes, we haven't seen a huge amount of change between this year and last year. A little slight drop on certain travel days, like Tuesday and Wednesday, prices have dropped a little bit. If you're leaving on a Monday, Wednesday, or a Sunday, prices are actually up slightly. If you're on non-stops, prices are up dramatically this year. So really, it looks like the airlines are really charging a pretty hefty premium for convenience. Well, we, we put together a... Uh a little piece on uh, Labor Day weekend getaways, but I, I envisioned it as being, you know, something that people could use for almost any holiday sure. if you want to get away, even though it's normally a really expensive time of year. But one of the things we notice is that there are still a couple of airlines that, you know, put out these, you know, every week they have weekend deals weekend, and they weekend. do it. They do it whether it's a holiday or not. Now, of course, they vary. They may not be the places you particularly want to go, and it may not have your departure city. But I, I must say, the the United deals are actually uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot to choose yeah, they from. Tend to, I, but, interestingly enough, a lot of them are like Thursday, Monday, or Saturday, Tuesday, or something. They have sort of strange travel days. They aren't Friday evening to Sunday evening on many of them. So, um, you know, a lot of them you got to come back on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, so you have to be careful about those. But, I mean, certainly if you have some flexibility, that's a perfect thing to do. Uh, and especially as you come into weekends like Labor Day weekend where a lot of people have Monday off. And these things are... are Frankly, they're harder and harder to find all the time because right. uh, the airlines have gotten so good at uh, figuring out how many people are going to be on their planes, right? Yeah, I'm wondering how many people, how many airline marketers come in on Monday morning and say, you know, they're they're calling all their bosses, I need something to market, give me some deals, give me some deals, <laughs> and the pricing department's going, no. And the inventory <laughs> department's going, no. <laughs> and they're like saying, how am I going to do my job? They said, it doesn't matter. We're filling up all our seats right now. And I think that's what's happening right now. So you do see some empty middle seats, a little bit of discounting on certain days. Uh, certainly on connecting flights, airlines don't monitor those as closely from a pricing perspective. So you'll find some deals there. But uh, certainly, um, you know, as we get into the next holiday, which is going to be Thanksgiving, um, you should be shopping right now for Thanksgiving. It's about getting a better bad deal. We've talked about this many, many times, and just avoid the, the, the crazy travel days, Wednesday before and Sunday after, and you can usually find a decent deal. Don't wait till the last minute. I've, I've done that. Oh, I've done that, and I've paid close to $1,000 for a ticket that's normally like two fifty, three hundred. Sure. But I had but it, to get. And, and, and you know what? If, if you are a procrastinator, your best bet is typically, well, the the two best bets are looking for some sort of package deal because many times they pre-negotiate the airfare um, well ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It's not as cheap uh, early on in the process, but late le at the last minute it is cheaper. And then it's also great time to, if you really want to go to use your award points or miles, depending on what program you're in. Anything over four. $450 should be a candidate to be using those models. 
the only thing I would add is um, sign up for airfare alerts because you never know. You never know. In fact, I, uh, Frontier just popped up today with a dollar sale. <laughs> now, in the small print, it says one dollar oh. plus taxes and fees. Tax but title license fees, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still cheap. It's fifteen dollars one way, but of course, the other way may be a lot higher. But still, you know, these things uh, occur come out of nowhere. And if you if you're signed up for the airfare alerts, you know, yeah, you'll you know, hear about it. As you might be aware, uh, be aware internally, I'm signed up to literally tens of thousands of routes. <laughs> <laughs> on our alert system because I like to see what's going on from city to city. So um, I've seen some great deals. Even uh, at our office here at Fair Compare, uh, we saw a deal, I think it was to Ireland, for a little over $500, and uh, somebody at the office actually won that trip. So Yes, I recall it was not me. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We're going to talk about an interesting titled story entitled uh, Fly Big, Fly Short, Save on Holidays, Really Save Anytime. Hey Rick, well of course you were the first one to, that I ever heard about this from and it's uh, it's simple, it's a handy little trick. It's a, a great thing if you're looking for either a getaway or maybe the family is deciding, sure. oh, whose house to go to for Thanksgiving, this will help. Yeah, you know, you, when you get on an airplane, it's kind of interesting whether you're taking a five-hour flight or a 90-minute flight, um, it, it, you're still getting away, right? So if you really want to save some money on in the fly short side, uh, typically flights under 90 minutes, you're going to see those tickets uh, under $100 round trip, even to some degree at the last minute. So if you have some last-minute uh, urge to get out of town, uh, certainly that's and, – and by the way, you know – for us geeks, where planes fly, you know, anywhere from you know 400 to 500 miles an hour, that would be about 500 mile radius uh, around your particular city. So, in my case, Dallas, that includes a pretty big swath <laughs> of the United States. You can actually fly to. And when we you say fly big, you're talking about big airports. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of I, I talk to a lot of folks like uh, that will go to say they live uh, in Indiana or Ohio area. Sometimes they'll go to Dayton Airport. Sometimes they'll go to Indianapolis. Uh, you know, sometimes you know if you're um, near a larger airport, but sometimes you can actually find something at some of these outer airports. So typically what you have at the bigger airports is at least one or two legacy airlines and at least one or two uh, low-cost or historically low-cost airlines like Southwest or JetBlue. Um, and that's where you're really going to see the savings. I, I do a lot of radio stuff in Wisconsin and people are you know, always asking you know, why is it, you know, an extra $150 to fly from Green Bay? It's just the connecting premium that's there. So they have to make the trade-off of driving to a bigger airport, for example. Yeah, and, and that's why, you know, compare fares, of course, but also compare uh, airports near you because, uh, y you know, it might make a three-hour drive really worth it, particularly, say, if you're going to Europe or something like that. Yeah, On the other they, hand, you know, also think about coming back and then <laughs> thinking, you have a three-hour drive ahead of you. But yeah, that's where it, relatives come in. Well, the interesting thing, too, is when you start to calculate these things, one of the things you need to look at is, is it more expensive to park, for example, at the oh, at, yeah. at the bigger airport? What's the, you know, at the moment, you know, gasoline prices aren't super high for cars, but um, sometimes that can be in the equation if it was 4 or $5 a gallon, which we've seen uh, historically. So you, you have to take all these into consideration. But in general, when you have a large family and you're in sort of a regional airport is your closest airport, you're going to pay a pretty hefty premium to fly out of there. All right. Thanks, Rick. Thanks.